It's always good to know what Goldman Sachs has to say, and we're going to find out right now. I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. I'm here with Abby Joseph Cohen, who is the senior investment strategist at Goldman Sachs, and of course a member of the Barron's Roundtable. Uh, Abby, let's start with the bad news before we go to the good news. In talking about where you see the economy right now, y you pointed out a few things that the U.S. has been doing in recent years that trouble you. Can you go into some of those? One of the things, Jack, that disturbs me is that as a nation, we used to lead the world for generations in terms of our investment in long-term factors, including basic research. For example, 4.5% of our GDP in the 1960s was dedicated to basic research in medical science, engineering, and so on. We're now down to 2.5%. We also see at the corporate level, many companies are using a lot of their prodigious cash on their balance sheets to increase dividends and repurchase shares rather than to invest in R&D. And that's something that we think really has to change to bolster the long-term economic prospects of the country. And you see a similar trend in education. Education has also been an area of disappointment. We have not deteriorated, but other nations have gotten dramatically better. So, for example, we used to have the largest percentage of population with college degrees. And we're no longer number one. We're now something like number 12. And in this new economy that is so much based upon information and innovation, if our college graduates are a smaller and smaller percentage of the economy, which is possible in the years ahead, that's a problem. We need to do something about that. Now, in the short term, I don't see that affecting things in 2014, but in my 401k, I've got a couple decades to go. I want it to keep on growing at this lovely rate it did last year. Should I be a little concerned? Should we as a nation, more importantly, be a little concerned about that trend? As a nation, we need to think about some of the government policies. So, for example, during the financial recession, the financial crisis followed by the severe recession, um, the government cut back uh, in some of the long-term investment in things like infrastructure and so on. We need to ramp that back up. Similarly, state and local governments are most responsible for education. That's where the spending takes place. And of course, with state and local governments under pressure, we've seen funding not really coming to the fore. We need to improve that, not just K through 12, but also at the community college level that's so responsible for training a lot of our middle income workers. Now, the glass is half full, you said, in, in some other ways involving government action. You actually said we're far ahead of most of the world in terms of kind of re, um, moving the financial sector where it needed to be after the crisis. I think that the Fed and the other financial regulators in the United States demonstrated incredible tough love, which has worked to our benefit. So, for example, we see that banks in the United States are, in fact, in much better uh, condition. Balance sheets are stronger. Capital adequacy ratios are higher, particularly when we compare to other nations that are, in some cases, years behind us in moving towards getting ready for Basel III and some of the other new capital standards. We, for example, would like to see more progress, the banks in Europe, um, as they address um, some of the problems on their balance sheet because until that gets done, it's hard to see how the banks will be able to lend out money uh, for economic growth. In the United States in 2013, we did see that commercial and industrial lending began to pick up at a more rapid pace. That's good for growth in 2014. So looking at that good outlook for growth, also you've got low interest rates, uh, you've got fairly tame inflation at the moment. So what's your outlook for the stock market in 2014? The stock market outlook is, we think a constructive one, but how good it will be really depends upon several factors. One is earnings growth. We think that margins, which are, have been so high over the last couple of years, probably won't grow more, uh, but earnings growth will likely be high single digit. Let's call it 8%, maybe somewhat higher than that. The real question then becomes the PE of the market. We saw notable PE expansion over the last couple of years, now about 16 times earnings. Now, and some people are worried 
worried that that could be getting a little lofty, nosebleed territory. Because it's the average for the last 50 years or so. Um, if you segment the historical data, though, what you see is that PEs have been higher for extended periods of time when inflation and interest rates are under control. So, for example, in previous periods with inflation 2.5% or less, the PE has been 18 to 20 times earnings, and inflation right now is under 2%. So uh, this is a scary question, but if you take our current PDE to 18 on what you think are reasonable earnings, where could that put the S&P 500 at the end of 2014? Excuse me. Our research team pegs S&P earnings at $116 in 2014, and the arithmetic suggests 2,088. Now, I don't intend to be overly precise. I'm just trying to give you a sense of proportion. If, however, there is not the multiple expansion, we're talking about uh, an S&P 500 closer to 1,900. Not as big a jump. Uh, just just one more question for you. Do you have it? This is the Barron's Roundtable after all. Would you like to share any stock picks? The stock picks that I have uh, for the Roundtable are going to be um, related to an improvement in the U.S. economy. Economic growth of 3, 3.5%, three excuse me, 3.2% in 2014. So looking at retailers in the United States looking at what consumers will be spending their money on in large part because the labor markets are getting somewhat better not as quickly as we would like but we are seeing an improvement the unemployment rate has moved down and we are beginning to see increases in household income so moving away from spending on consumer staples towards consumer discretionary thanks very much Abby